If you are not paying your credit card like this, you're doing it wrong. In today's video, I will show you exactly how to pay your credit card bill, how much you should pay, and the best strategies to help boost your credit score. In fact, everything that I will be teaching you today has helped me get to a fairly decent credit score. What's up winners, my name is Nam. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit, starting out by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. So the key to paying your credit card bill the right way is to know your way around a credit card statement. So here's a real life example of my Navy Federal credit card. So let's go from the top to the bottom. So previously, I had a balance of $470. I ended up paying off $721, but I also made an additional $1,400 in purchases. The reason why I had a payment of about $700, which is higher than my previous balance, is by paying my balance due plus extra when a transaction hits my account. So when you add all of those numbers together, I have a new balance of 1,162. So as you move down, it will show you your credit limit. So in this example, it is $2,500 and also your current credit available. Now, what you really have to pay attention to is the statement closing date. Right after this date, this is when the credit card companies will decide to report your information to the credit bureaus. So if you're not already aware, there are three major credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Each one of these credit bureaus has a different algorithm that determines your credit score. So back to the statement. So for this particular bill, my statement closing date is February 6th. Usually your closing date will be exactly the same day every single month. So if you take a look at my previous credit statements, they all fall on the 6th. This is typically the date that you open your card or around that time. So normally you can expect a billing cycle of around 28 to 31 days. So in this instance, the billing cycle for this credit card is 31 days. This means for any transactions that I made 31 days before February 6th will be accounted for. That includes all of my charges and credits. So on this bill, since I have a new balance of 1,162, I would have to pay it off by March 3rd to avoid interest. So between February 6th and March 3rd, this is called a grace period. Hopefully you're still following. During this time, if you were to pay off this balance up until March 3rd, there will be no interest charged to that balance. So this brings me on to my next point. When exactly should you pay off your credit card to get the most effect from it? So the short answer is simply before the statement closing date. If my statement closing date ends on February 6th, this means that I want to keep the balance as low as possible days in advance. The reason being is that if my closing date falls on the weekend, your payment may not be accounted for. Normally, I would recommend paying off your balance three to five days before the actual date. And in that time, I would try to not put any more transactions on that card because they may hit and you may not have the ability to pay them off on time. So if you have multiple credit cards, it is best to alternate between them. If not, try to keep your transactions small. So for example, let's just say that you have a current balance of $1,000 on February 2nd. Since my statement cycle closed on February 6th, I would want to pay off that balance in full on February 2nd. This will give it enough time for the balance to reach zero. So when my statement closes on February 6th, the credit barrels will show a zero balance. Now let's step back for a second and talk about credit utilization. All credit utilization is, is the amount of credit that you are using compared to your total limit. So let's just say that you have a credit limit of $2,000. You spend $200 on restaurants, $300 on groceries, and $200 on random things on Amazon. This comes to a total of $700. If you were to maintain this balance after the payment closes, you would have a credit utilization of 35%. My recommendation is to try to keep your credit card balance as low as possible. I'm not saying not to use your credit card. You can use it as much as you want, but you would want to pay it off early. Credit utilization plays a role in the amounts owed portion of your FICO score. So it really comes down to debt. If the maximum FICO score is 850, 255 of those points are affected by debt. This is a big difference between excellent and fair credit. If you ever search on the internet and read articles, they recommend having a credit utilization of 30% or less. While this is a good start, based on my own data points and reviewing hundreds of credit reports, if you were to keep this number less than 10%, this will give you a better chance of having a higher credit score. But if you can keep this number low and closer to 0%, I truly believe this will help your credit score much more. Because the common myth that gets passed around is that if there's no balance that's being recorded to the credit bureaus, others will see this that you're not using the credit that is available to you, which may hurt your chances of getting more credit. I find this far from the truth because I was able to achieve an 800 something credit score by keeping my credit utilization very close to zero. Some of the time it probably was like one to 3%, but the majority of the time was very close to zero. So if possible, try to pay your credit card balance a few days before the closing date. As a reminder, this is your active balance, not your new balance on your credit card bill. Because the new balance on your credit card bill is just a balance that you would have to pay off anyways. 
so it is best to keep any balance on your credit card as low as possible. On that note, this brings me to today's video sponsor, Extra. Extra is the first debit card that builds credit. How Extra works is by you making purchases with your Extra debit card, and they spot you for the transaction. However, Extra is connected to your existing checking account. So one business day after you make your purchase, Extra takes that money from your bank account. At the end of the month, Extra then reports your transactions to the credit bureaus. Unlike most debit cards, you also earn redeemable reward points for transactions. You can get up to 1% in points for everyday purchases. Link in the description. Now back to our video. Let's talk about what if you're unable to pay the balance to zero prior to the closing date. I get that everybody has a different financial situation. You might be living paycheck to paycheck or money is just tight. To be completely honest, there's really no magic bullet. The best suggestion is to pay off as much as you can prior to the statement closing. But if you are unable to, just make sure that you make the minimum payment when it is due. With most credit card statements, they explain how long would it take to pay off your credit card bill if you were to just pay off the minimum. For instance, with this credit card bill, if I were to only pay the minimum payment, which is $24, it would take me eight years to pay it off. That's such a long time. Also, I would end up paying $1,800 rather than $1,100. If I were just to pay $15 more, which is $39 a month, this would take me three years to pay it off with a total of $1,400. So when it comes down to credit card payments, if you can make more than the minimum payment, even if it's an extra $20 or $40, this is gonna cut off the life of that debt so much sooner. Plus, you will save some extra money. But honestly, credit card debt is one of the worst kinds of debt because their interest rates are ridiculously high. In my example, I have an APR of 13%. Since this is with a credit union, their interest rates tend to be a little bit lower, but if you were to go with the big banks such as Chase, Citi, or American Express, this can be upwards of 20%. So if your credit card statement does not show this, then you can Google a quick calculator to see how much time and money that you can save. So it's always a fine line that you're dancing with if you're putting items on credit but not able to pay it off before the statement cycle closes. I understand that everybody's financial situation is different and emergencies happen, but you gotta be extremely careful. The reason being is that you never wanna miss a payment. Plus, if you continuously have a balance on your credit report, your credit score cannot be as high as it could be. I worked with clients before and they never had missed payments, but they were just making the minimum payment. They thought by doing this over a long time, it would help build credit. So when I tell them, hey, if you have the financial means to do so, just pay off your credit card balance and they see your credit score jump by 30 to 50 points. But now let's just say that you have a credit card that offers an intro 0% APR. The same idea still applies. The main reason why this is, is that you still have a balance on your credit card. And any time that you have a balance, this counts towards credit utilization. So if you were just to make the minimum payment, you will save money on interest, but having a balance outweighs those benefits. Another uncommon tactic that can be extremely powerful is that if you were to open up a business credit card. The reality behind this is that anybody can start a business and it's really not all that difficult. If you are curious about how to do this, I did make a video on this particular topic a little while ago, which you can click up here. But anyways, if you were to transfer balances to a business credit card, that utilization will not show up on your personal credit report. This way, in case of an emergency or something like that, you can carry debt with a business credit card, but not let it harm your personal credit score. But Nam, I have like seven credit cards. How can I keep track of all of those payment due dates? Now, there are a bunch of companies and apps that allow you to do this, but probably the easiest option is by using the Credit Karma app. If you guys are not already using this app, I do have a link down in the description. With Credit Karma, they allow you to look at all of your reporting accounts with TransUnion or Equifax. So for instance, if it says that the information was reported on February 7th, then it is best to pay that card's total balance that you have on that credit card in full a few days before then. This particularly comes in handy when you only have a few credit cards. But if you have multiple credit cards such as myself, the simplest way is probably to pay off your transactions as you make them. So you know that your balance remains low. Another strategy that you can use is called the AZO method. This is also known as all zero except one. I also made a video on this particular strategy, which you can find up here. But if you don't want to watch the whole video, that's totally cool. The gist of the strategy is to keep zero balances on all of your credit cards except one. Meaning that you would essentially just use one credit card as your main credit card, and you would want to keep the balance as low as possible prior to the statement closing date. The theory behind this is that this will simplify your credit utilization across one credit card and across all of your credit cards. So when it's all said and done, anytime that you pay your credit card bill after the statement closing date, this will tend to have a negative impact to your credit score. Because if you do have a balance, it will be reported to the credit bureaus, which will remain on your credit report for at least 30 days until a new balance gets reported. So the best thing to keep in mind is to keep your credit utilization as low as possible, and I recommend having near zero if you can. 
If you want to learn more strategies about building credit, come check out these videos over here.